so uh, let me discuss forced harmonic oscillation uh, in this lecture okay so what is our system we have a frictionless horizontal table and on that table um, spring mass system is kept and this whole system is kept inside a static medium the medium is static okay and and an external force is acting on that particular particle okay so this is the whole system of forced oscillator forced oscillator harmonic or not i don't know okay so this is a frictionless table and this mass spring system is kept inside a static medium so this static medium will be providing a damping force on this particle uh, on this uh, mass m so if the mass is extended for a x for x distance then uh, how then and we, if we leave it from there then how many forces are what are the forces that is acting on this particle so first force is restoring force restoring force f restoring that will be trying to bring that particle mass in its equilibrium position okay then the second force will be due to the static medium the damping force and the third force i am uh, i am uh, giving an external force on that particular particle okay so in our last uh, chapter that we have learned damped harmonic oscillation we know that if this external force is missing then only for this restoring force and damping force what was the system like the trajectory of the particle was like uh, uh, it, it was a oscillatory solution if the damping is very small but the oscillation amplitude was dying down with time okay exponentially decaying with time so that was the reason uh, the energy of the particle was also decaying with respect to time so here in this particular situation what we have done is that we have given some external force so that the the motion can be sustained the oscillation can be sustained okay so this is our uh, differential equation of motion mass into acceleration equal to the forces that is acting on this particular particle f restoring f damping and f external so f restoring as we have known from our last lecture that restoring force is proportional to the displacement of the particle and it ha it has to be it will be in the opposite direction to the uh, to this x so if x increases in this direction restoring force will be in the if f x decreases x is along this direction the restoring force will be in this direction so if restoring is proportional to minus x i am taking the proportionality constant as s so sx so please understand that s has to be greater than 0 for this case if damping again damping force will be trying to stop the motion of the particle so uh, it will also be acting Uh, in the reverse direction where x is increasing the change in x if x increases in this direction damping force will be acting in this direction if x decreases uh, here then also damping force will be trying to bring it back to the original position it will try to stop so again it will be proportional to now the damping force is proportional to what we have learned in this uh, we have taken we have assumed the damping force to be proportional to the velocity of the particle in the last chapter again okay it is a it is proportional to the velocity of the particle so dx dt and as a proportionality constant we took rm as the proportionality constant okay so minus sign is due to its direction of this force and dx dt it is proportional to the velocity of the particle and rm is the proportionality constant again rm is a positive quantity now the external force so plus f external okay so if i uh, write down this equation in a uh, normal form so m x double dot x double dot means d2 x dt2 plus rm x dot x dot means dx dt plus sx equal to f external okay now what uh, what can we take as the external force external force can be anything it can be a constant force it can be a exponentially increasing force with respect to time it can be uh, it can be anything any external force so but in this chapter we want to get a final solution that is harmonic in nature harmonic oscillation okay so that's why we will be again assuming the external force to be a oscillatory force or sinusoidal force let's take the external force as f not cos 
omega 1 t. So, omega 1 is the frequency of this external force, F naught is its magnitude, okay. F naught cos omega 1 t, you can also take F naught sin omega 1 t, doesn't matter, the solution will not change. You can also take F naught e to the power of j omega 1 t, okay, then also the solution will not change because all three are periodic forces. So, periodic external force. So, periodic external periodic force. So, periodic external force we have assumed the external force to be periodic in nature. Okay. Now, if I divide this whole thing in with uh, the mass of the particle x double dot plus rm by m x dot plus s by m x equal to f naught by m cos omega 1 t. Okay. Rm by m from our uh, earlier classes we know that rm by m equal to 2b but b is the damping factor s by m we assume as omega naught square we know that from our discussion of simple harmonic oscillation omega naught is the natural frequency of the system okay and f naught by m is equal to let's consider it as to be f naught please clear your definition regarding s s is the restoring force per unit displacement of the particle Rm is the damping force per unit velocity of the particle. Okay. So, these are the definitions. Okay. Omega naught is the natural frequency of the system and omega 1 is the frequency of the external force. Omega 1 is the, so we got two frequencies here. So, now the differential equation looks like x double dot plus 2b x dot plus omega naught square x equal to f naught cos omega 1 this is the differential equation of motion of a forced oscillator forced oscillator under a periodic external force okay now we have to solve this differential equation to get the trajectory of the particle as we said that trajectory means x as a function of time okay we need to solve this differential equation now as you can see that this differential equation is a linear linear non homogeneous linear non homogeneous second order differential equation okay non homogeneous differential equation how do we solve it we have to solve it using uh, we, we, the general solution of a general solution of a non homogeneous linear differential equation second order differential equation is given by x general t equal to x homogeneous plus x particular t okay x homogeneous means this is the solution of the homogeneous different homogeneous part of this non homogeneous differential equation let me call this equation one so x h t is the solution of the differential equation uh, if i put zero in the right hand side and x p t is a particular solution of this differential equation 1 where we have to solve this differential equation as it is in its present form and if I uh, take some summation of them then I will be getting the general solution of this differential equation so so this is the homogeneous solution or complementary function okay homogeneous solution homogeneous solution how do you get it so homogeneous solution means this is the solution of the differential equation to be x dot plus omega naught square x equal to 0 okay so that means we have already solved it in in the uh, damped harmonic oscillating uh, lesson chapter and the solution of this differential equation x h t let me call it x h t came as some a naught e to the power of minus b t cosine of omega t minus 5 okay omega what is omega a naught is the amplitude of this uh, a naught e to the power of minus bt is the amplitude of this oscillation and this solution came when when omega naught is greater than b under this condition low damping condition we got this solution omega was equal to root over of omega naught square minus b square that was the solution of this uh, homogeneous part of this differential equation 1 ok and phi phi naught let me call it phi naught a naught these are all functions of so a naught phi naught 
these are all functions of of initial condition initial condition that is x not or v not x not v not okay initial condition okay so this is the solution of the homogeneous part now the particular solution to calculate the particular solution particular solution what we need to do we need to solve this differential equation 1 x double dot plus 2 b x dot plus omega naught square x equal to f naught cos omega 1 t okay we have to solve it how will sorry uh, how will we solve it will be just taking a trial solution of this differential equation the so trial solution as a trial solution what we will take you can take any solution as your trial solution but here we will be taking uh, uh, this solution xpt trial solution i will be taking some c1 cos omega 1t plus c2 cos omega 2 omega 1t sorry sin omega 1t cos omega 1t sin omega 1t okay this is uh, i am taking as a trial solution so after i get the trial solution i have to put it in the differential equation so xp dot is equal to minus omega 1 c1 sin omega 1 t plus omega 1 c2 cos omega 1 t okay xp double dot is equal to minus omega 1 square c1 cos omega 1 t plus or uh, minus omega 1 square c2 sin omega 1 t simple derivative with respect to time ddt okay now i will be putting this three equations in equation 1 okay this was our equation 1 so um, xp double dot that means minus omega 1 square c1 cos omega 1 t minus omega 1 square c2 sin omega 1 t plus 2b x dot 2b x, x dot means 2b that means uh, minus omega 1 c1 sin omega 1 t plus 2b omega 1 c2 cos omega 1 t okay how okay. then omega naught square x plus omega naught square x is c1 cos omega 1 t plus omega naught square c2 sin omega 1 t that is equal to right hand side i have f naught cos omega 1 t now i will be uh, trying to equate c uh, get two equ so uh, this is how we get the left hand side and right hand side so how now i we, we can find out two equations corresponding to these two arbitrary constant c1 and c2 c1 and c2 are arbitrary constant of this trial solution why two arbitrary constants because it is a second order differential equation okay now how can you find out these two equations we can uh, equate the coefficients of cosine of omega 1t and sine of omega 1t in both sides of this equation okay so by equating the coefficient of cos omega 1t cos omega 1t what is the equation we get so first term is minus omega 1 square c1 okay uh, plus 2b omega 1 c2 plus omega naught square c1 equal to f naught in the right hand side and the second second equation that i get by equating the coefficient of sin omega 1t that is equal to a minus omega 1 square c2 minus 2b omega 1 c1 plus omega naught square c2 equal to right hand side the coefficient of sin omega 1 t is equal to 0 is equal to 0 ok so these are the two equations so that means from the first equation what do i get i get this um, omega naught square minus omega 1 square into c1 plus 2b omega 1 into c2 
equal to f naught okay and from the second equation what we get we get that um, uh, omega naught square minus omega 1 square into c2 uh, equal to 2b omega 1 c1 c1 okay that means what do i get i get c2 equal to 2b omega 1 by omega naught square minus omega 1 square into c1 now let me put this value of c2 in this equation so from this equation omega naught square minus omega 1 square into c1 plus 2b omega 1 into c2 that is 2b omega 1 so omega naught square minus omega 1 square omega 1 square into c1 equal to f naught f naught that means c1 this is a little bit of algebra nothing else c1 equal to f naught into omega naught square minus omega 1 square by by omega naught square minus omega 1 square whole square c1 equal to huh. so, uh, so by omega plus plus 4 b square omega 1 square ok fine so this is the value of c1 we get one arbitrary constant and the second arbitrary constant I will be getting from this equation ok from this equation so c2 equal to c2 equal to 2b omega 1 by omega naught square minus omega 1 square omega 1 square into c1 into c1 is f naught f naught omega naught square minus omega 1 square by omega naught square minus omega 1 square whole square plus 4 b square omega 1 square ok that is equal to 2 b omega 1 into f naught by by omega naught square minus omega 1 square whole square plus 4 b square omega 1 square so this is c2 this is c2 ok so this is a big term let me uh, write z in terms of in place of this so z equal to omega naught square minus omega 1 square whole square plus 4 b square omega 1 square ok so c1 that we get f naught omega naught square minus omega 1 square by z ok and c2 equal to f naught into 2b omega 1 by z so this is what we found ok now this was our trial solution xpt xpt equal to if i put the value of c1 and c2 so f naught omega naught square minus omega 1 square by z cos omega 1 t omega 1 t plus plus f naught 2 b omega 1 by z sin omega 1 t ok so if i take f naught by root over of z as common so this will be omega naught square minus omega 1 square by root over of z cos omega 1 t plus plus 2b omega 1 by root over of z sin omega 1 t now if i assume cos phi 1 equal to this omega naught square minus omega 1 square by root over of z and sin phi 1 equal to 2b omega 1 by root over of z then then this xpt particular solution becomes f naught by root over of z huh? cos phi 1 cos phi 1 cos omega 1 t plus sin phi 1 sin omega 1 t that means we can write down the particular solution as f naught by root over of z cosine of omega 1 t minus phi 1 ok so then i will tell this as the amplitude 
a1 cos omega 1t minus phi 1 so these are the two solutions so one is particular solution so please see the particular solution this is the amplitude of the particular solution particular solution ka amplitude hai and it depends on which factors f naught and root over of z z depends on which factor omega naught which is the natural frequency of the system omega 1 which is the frequency of the external force and b is the damping factor so all of them are constants nobody depends on the initial condition please understand that so a1 is independent of initial condition okay and this is a oscillatory solution harmonic solution if you draw time versus this particular solution then it's nothing but a oscillatory solution it will be in oscillating for infinitely many times with frequency omega 1 and this phase phi 1 is also what is this phi 1 phi 1 is equal to tan inverse of tan inverse of 2b omega 1 by omega naught square minus omega 1 square this is also independent of the initial current. very important point to understand that the amplitude here and the phase both are independent of the initial condition okay but the homogeneous part if you notice amplitude is not independent of the initial condition and also the phase is also not independent of the initial condition okay and the homogeneous solutions frequency is not omega 1 not omega naught but it's something else omega that we have learned in the damped harmonic oscillation so these are the two solutions i will be ending this video by writing down the general solution so general solution x g t equal to x h t plus x p t particular solution so x h t is a naught e to the power of minus b t cosine of omega t minus phi naught plus x p t is a 1 cosine of omega 1 t minus phi 1 so this is the general solution of this differential equation okay fine